Hello again from a bonus video. This is me again, Ayub from the WebDev Care channel. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about serverless. That's right, everyone is talking about serverless. So why shouldn't I? The first thing I wanna say about this new buzzword is that serverless doesn't mean no servers. And before I go deeper into this, I wanna remind you of how we got to where we are today. So not so long ago, companies and individuals used to buy and manage their own software and hardware from networking infrastructure to data stores and servers to high level responsibilities, hiring and specialized teams and individuals for each responsibility. It was kind of the IAY, do it all yourself. After that, companies started outsourcing some responsibilities. Then the cloud came, which in combination with virtualization, laid the ground for infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and similar services, which made companies and individuals happy. These technologies and trends allowed for more outsourcing and as a result, more focus on the business logic. So lead time has shortened and the creation of software from requirements gathering to production ready software has become relatively easier cheaper and quicker good then the containerization wave came and we started to hear about deploying single instances and units that use enough resources from the host and the same thing happened new services emerged referred to as gas or container as a service and now you might be seeing dude i want to hear about serverless what's with the history class okay you had to know this or at least be reminded of it because if you think about this it's all for making building software and deploying it easier cheaper and quicker all of that with reducing risk and increasing efficiency right and serverless is nothing but a step forward in this movement or evolution if you will you see for each of these advancements cloud infrastructure as a service platform as a service container as a service for each one of these some headaches have been gone and a lot of burden has been lifted from our shoulders by outsourcing the management and maintenance of the infrastructure, the platform, or even higher levels of the stack. That's great. But there are still some headaches that we still need to deal with, like servers, the logic they require, and everything from creating server-side code that perform a lot of functionalities that are not related to the business, by the way, like routing, security, authentication, and authorization. And of course, maintaining and debugging the server-side of the application are still done by developers. Well, serverless came to make another headache disappear, building and managing the server-side of our application. Serverless is building software by focusing more on business logic without thinking about how you are going to serve your software. Like there is no server, just business logic and boom. Man, are you serious? This is like fantasy. Yeah, I know, but it's not. This doesn't mean no server side work by developers at all. There will be still some configuration and integration work, but all those headaches of routing, debugging servers technologies, as well as scaling and handling failovers, all of the hell backend developers used to go through are gone with serverless. So serverless is building software without worrying about servers. This new model or new way of thinking, building software the serverless way, has specific mechanisms or constraints, if you will, that we need to follow, which is how it works. And before I explain that, I want to say that this approach forces us to use new architectural patterns and styles in building our software. More specifically, event-driven distributed patterns work well with this model. But we have to be careful here. Software architects might be obliged to make some changes regarding the architectural pattern used okay so how does this serverless computing work well here we have the client on the right side and the developer on the left side and in between is where the magic happens so we basically write business logic and deploy it to the provider say amazon which encapsulates code units in forms of functions which is where actually the fast acronym came from or function as a service and so whenever a client request comes to your application a notification gets triggered to a service that is listening for client requests after that the server try to locate the code that is responsible for answering the request and when it it finds it it loads it into a container then the code gets executed and the answer gets constructed and sent to the client and that's pretty much it now I have mentioned the term fast as serving your code units as functions that is your business logic and that's only one aspect of this model the other aspect of serverless is that you get to have other responsibilities done for you through BAS or backend as a service like authentication and routing etc and I'm sure you've heard of OAuth and Amazon API gateway before these technologies belong 
belong to serverless computing and they are considered backend services and of course you can use them to your advantage as well and this is serverless in a nutshell now let me briefly list the pros and cons of serverless because this is important to know in order to make the right decision well just like all cloud services the serverless model reduces or even eliminates managing and maintaining server-side work and eventually reduces cost you don't have to hire anyone to do backend work for you and you also save a lot of money thanks to the economy of scale another advantage is reduced risk and increased efficiency by delegating and handling over server-side responsibilities to someone who is dedicated to such responsibilities and have a great expertise in this area you reduce the risk of doing the wrong thing or even failing to fix the system when it is down cloud providers ensure everything is going smoothly and even if something goes wrong they are ready to fix it in a matter of minutes or even seconds also you don't have to worry about security and updates and the best part is if your application suddenly needs more resources or needs to scale that is handled for you in no time this is impossible when you are managing your servers on your own the last thing I want to say concerning serverless model is that by letting you focus more on business the prototyping cycle and lead time has significantly shortened in comparison to before however this doesn't mean serverless is the magic wand that will turn everything to gold it has some limitations well probably the most serious limitation is that managing state for complex requests is tricky and developers should know their way around this another limitation is the high latency because there will be a lot of calls and also the problem of what is known as the cold start which is when your code is requested while it is not running these problems turn into issues for systems that need to be highly interactive and real time one last limitation I want to talk about is the vendor lock-in this simply means you become very dependent on the service provider and certainly there are drawbacks in these situations but I believe this will change in the near future as more cloud providers enter the market and technologies gets more standardized so these are some limitations and you might find other ones but the key to mention these are not to prove serverless is good or bad instead it's worth knowing because it lets you make the right choice okay before I conclude let me tell you about some serverless computing providers and technologies and list some examples of the things that can be built with serverless technology Amazon is one of the first if not the pioneer to enter this new evolution with AWS Lambda a serverless computing platform that adopts an event-driven approach you have what you need to create serverless apps Google Cloud Functions is another provider for serverless services it has a different approach but the model is pretty much the same and lastly Google Firebase is a well-known platform that you can use in this context not only for mobile but also for SPAs and here is a list of what you can build with serverless computing and of course there are other types of systems static websites for example by using Amazon S3 service small e-commerce platforms chatbots Internet of Things services big data applications event-driven systems etc so this is just a short list of what you can build with serverless technology I hope you enjoyed the video and most importantly you got to learn about serverless don't forget to subscribe like and leave a comment if you want till the next video stay tuned